happy to be here uh, for the second time, actually. And uh, well, uh, I'm giving today, as everyone can see here on this huge screen, uh, a talk about computer-aided engineering with Blender. And in order, well, to do computer-aided engineering with Blender, well, first of all, everybody of us has to know what computer-aided engineering is, actually. And so, um, well, actually, it's, uh, well, industrial engineering with computers. And I guess, uh, as it's the last talk of the conference, uh, we have seen lots of examples of industrial engineering uh, in the conference. Uh, but, well, I'd still give this talk in order to promote it. Um, so what is it? So um, there are, uh, of course, uh, computer-aided design applications, which are part of engineering. So this is more or less the first step that you do if you want to um, create something or create an object in the real world. Um, then there are uh, something that we will talk here is about fluid dynamics applications. So if I, uh, if I have my, my model, uh, how can I, how can I uh, do this kind of calculations? Then there are also, for example, finite element calculations. And in general, um, so finite element applications are, for example, if I want to know, well, uh, does an object support the impact onto it? Does an object, will an object survive? Will, will a building stay in its place? Uh, calculations like this. And of course, well, it's in the end, it's all kind of numerical simulations, so solving partial differential equations um, that predict the mechanical properties of, of objects to be engineered. Yeah? Um, and not only to be engineered, because, well, this is also an engineering problem. Uh, and in this problem, uh, this is an image that I actually rendered for a poster at the scientific presentation. So here the question was like, um, what is the weight that you can put on this uh, woman's back uh, until, until her vertebrate will break? Yeah? Um, and uh, then you find out, well, actually, it depends not only on the vertebrate and stuff like this, but what is the most important stuff is actually the, the center of mass. So where is the center of mass of all the mass that is above this vertebrate? Yeah? And this is a typical engineering problem. Um, and you can use Blender to visualize it. And if you put this, this visualization onto your poster at the scientific presentations, well, then actually people come to watch this poster. Yeah? Um, so continue. What is the state of, of computer-aided engineering right now? Yeah? And this is the big problem. And this is also why I come here is that well, uh, there are lots of tools available, but all these tools, they are very expensive. Um, they are all closed source, and they are hard to get, to get working on. Yeah? Um, so these tools, well, they all, of course, they have names. Maybe some guys of, uh, know these tools. And well, wh what can we do about it in order to, to make this kind of work that I typically is done with those programs open source and to use an open source pipeline in order to do it? So there are open source engines available, but there is no, not really a modeling program or a CAD program available that you can do it. And then some of these open source engines are rather weird. So for example, there is uh, Code Saturn and Code Aster, which is used uh, well by French government institutions, more or less, or well, almost French government institutions, uh, in order to make their calculations for their nuclear power plants. And they are open source, but the problem is, well, they use French command syntax. So you get an English manual, but then you type in French commands, and it's kind of, yeah, it drives you a bit crazy in your brain. But uh, that's the way it is. Yeah? And then uh, we have some, well, some visualization tools, um, which are quite nice, but, well, uh, you can't really pass trace with them, your results. So maybe Blender can help us in here. Yeah? Um, so now, right now, that we know what CA is and which programs are used in the, in the general field, um, what is the typical pipeline? So how do you do it? Yeah, I, if I want to do a fluid simulation or if I want to do a finite element simulation, what am I going to do? So first of all, I need a geometric model of, my, uh, of, of what I want to simulate. Yeah? Uh, and the geometric model, in most of the cases, well, it's just a surface. So it's an STL file that I can create with Blender. Yeah? Then uh, you have to create a mesh. So actually, this mesh is not the Blender mesh. Yeah? So for, for forget for a moment the Blender mesh. So it's actually, uh, how do I partition the object yeah, that I investigate in order to solve my equations on it? Yeah? 
Uh, and so in the normal way, so you use something like hexahedrons or tetrahedrons, and you have then small little boxes in, inside your object. And uh, well, then you have to define something, something like boundary conditions. So where is my object held in place? Uh, what is the wind speed? Stuff like this. And then you simulate. Yeah? And then at the end, when you have the simulation, then you have lots of data, and then you don't know, well, what does my simulation actually tell me? And uh, well, the stuff how to do this then is, uh, well, you want to visualize it, and you want to render it. And then you interpret your results, and hopefully you have the right interpretation of the simulation that we had. And so right now, the question is, where comes Blender in into all this kind of stuff? Well, uh, Blender can be used to create a geometric model. And Blender can, of course, be used in order to extract, visualize, and render all these kinds of stuff. Um, well, there is also some uh, physical stuff inside Blender, but uh, in this case, we just well, we want to use Blender in order to use these open source engines. Uh, so we do the geometric modeling and the visualization in this talk. But maybe in the future, well, some guys are like programming Python interfaces to this kind of stuff, and then you do all in Blender. So this this is like the the optimal world. Yeah? Um, and why are we want, do we want to do this? Well, uh, there is, of course, a need for an intuitive, open source, computer-aided engineering platform, which at the moment doesn't exist. Yeah? Um, and I really stress this, because the problem is, um, well, I was hired for my last job in order to write a finite element code for, for a lab. And it was cheaper for them than buying the closed source software in order to hire me and to write the code for them for the small brick that they wanted to have. Yeah? So um, the experiment, wh what do we want to do? So we want to have an open source pipeline. So we try to do it. Yeah? So can we make a computer-aided engineering using only open source tools? Does it work? Yeah? Um, so we use Blender to build a geometric model. Then we use open source meshing tools. Then we use an open source software, which is called OpenFoam, in order to run the simulation. And then we use some kind of Python code in order to get everything back into Blender. And then we do some rendering. And then we will watch our results. Yeah? So <coughs> building the geometric model, model uh, in general, if you want to do computer-aided engineering, well, you do the same thing as in for 3D printing. You want to have whole models which are physically correct. So you, you can't just put a surface somewhere and hope that this will work. So you have to have a volume which is closed and which is manifold. And then when, once you have this volume, well, you export, in this case, uh, your object to SDL. You verify your model maybe by, by re-importing it. And one thing which is also important if you do, of course, engineering is that you get your units right. And so uh, you should be making sure that in all these files, so into whatever you export it and into whatever you import it, that you use the same uh, Units, because it's not obvious, because most of these files don't store the units actually in them. So you don't really know uh, if the STL file is right now in millimeters or in centimeters. Or, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so we started out. So this here is in Blender. So we, we create this model here. And we try to make a simulation with this model. Yeah? Um, so we, once we have this model, well, we have to build a mesh. Yeah? Uh, and so. Well, yeah, the type of mesh that you need well, will depend on the problem. So in this case, it's a fluid dynamic simulation. So we will use some kind of hexahedral mesh. It's a very, very simple problem, actually. And uh, in this case, we showed that we can use these open source tools so that we can use OpenFoam block mesh and snappy hex mesh in order to do this. And what does this look like? So um, this here is actually the SDL surface that we have created in Blender. Yeah, so this house that we have just seen before. And this here is the mesh. So we have little boxes that are around this object. Yeah? And right now, you know why actually the same principles as in 3D printing apply, because otherwise your boxes will be in there, and then your, your thing will not work anymore. Yeah? Um, so this is what the, I talked before, the initial conditions. So the initial conditions, well, we have a quite windy night. Uh, it's blowing with 80 kilometers per hour, and I want to see well, what happens with, with this house. Yeah, and uh, well, on the end, so actually, 
uh, the, the way this is set up, this is actually a tunnel. Yeah, so the roof, so the, the top of the tunnel is very high above the roof, not as, uh, as shown in here in this representation, so that actually the, the, the impact of the roof doesn't, doesn't fall into the simulation. And on the end of the tunnel, where you see you have a constant pressure, and what this does is actually that when the wind comes from this side, that it sucks out the air on the other side. Yeah? Um, yeah, this is basically recaptured what I just told you. So we have constant, yeah, constant velocity on input and stuff like this. And then, of course, you also have to define what kind of simulation model I use. So uh, simple k-epsilon model. I don't want to go into details here. So actually, it's the differential equations that I want to solve on this grid. Yeah? So um, to stay with this. Yeah? And once we have this simulation, well, uh, then we obtain a VTK file, which is basically, so we have all these little boxes, and we have a value in these boxes, so in this box, so we know what is the wind speed in this box, for example. And the question is then, how do we get this in back into Blender? So in this case, uh, well, I wrote some Python glue, co glue code in order to uh, create streamlines. And uh, well, uh, I was very proud of this because actually the stuff what happened is I, I, get, I got this right so that I generate automatically the keyframes yeah, in order so that the, that the streamline actually moves with the correct speed in, in this voxel so that you not only see the line how the air moves, but that you also see it with the correct speed how it moves. And well, this is, this is what the result looks like. Yeah? So this is actually, so these are, this is the building that we had, and these are the streamlines around, around the building. Yeah? So this is one, one of the things that you can do with this. Then you can, uh, for example, if you want to have volumetric properties, yeah, you can use your mesh, you can create image slices, and you can show, uh, well, results, uh, volumetric results. Yeah? For example, uh, what is the, I don't know, the, the air temperature uh, at, at, the, at an object. And this, for example, this year was a simulation where you have got a tube, and there is air with a very ho uh, high velocity flowing through this tube, and you have an obstacle in this tube. And so you see here where, how, how, where, where the air actually is getting hot. So this is done using, using cycles volume rendering. Yeah? OK, then you have like. Uh, well, surface properties, well, it's the same stuff. So you actually, you, get a, you take an image, so you create an image from your mesh, and then you UV map the image onto your Blender mesh. Yeah? And here it gets a bit complicated. So uh, just to tell you, <coughs> well, uh, if you want to do this in Python, maybe, maybe it, has, it has improved a bit. But if you take, for example, the, the cylinder primitive in, in Blender, yeah? um, well, you have faces 0 to 29, which go into one direction. Yeah? And then all of a sudden, you have faces 31 and 32, yeah? which are not really in order, because between them, you have the top face, yeah? which go into the other direction. Yeah? Uh, and if you want to UV map onto that, and you UV map, you say, OK, my Python code is correct. And what happens? So you don't know why, why on these two surfaces I don't get what I actually expect from my simulation and actually you find out that it's all mixed up. So um, uh, I don't know who created these primitives, but if it would be, if the developer is here, if, if, if it could be arranged in a logic way, it would be, would be very nice. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so this is, for example, a rendering that comes from this. So this was uh, a test rendering that, that I sent to a client one day. And uh, here, actually, so there were some pipes. Yeah, and the question was, actually, well, will these pipes break or won't they break? And uh, so actually, they gave me their, their fluid dynamic simulations, and I gave them this rendering, and they wanted to make some commercial movie out of this. And here you see that, well, actually, in this section where these pipes are cool, that you have some thermal stress so that the thermal gradient is, is, is rather high because you have different, different colors on them. Yeah? So this is done this way. And then we come to the, to the results of, of so to some movies. Yeah? Uh, I will go back to my computer to start the movies because using Google does it like uh, I can just yeah I will just close it actually or just put it put it back here somewhere yeah that's fine and then I guess I have it here and. <laughs>
How are we with the time actually? The time, the time. Fine? Yeah, okay. Um, so, okay, so. So this is uh, a result of this. So here you see the streamlines flowing around the object. Okay, this doesn't work here, but it, I guess it will come up with the next one automatically, yeah. So this is from the front. Then we get it from the side another time, and then we get the force movie where we have these projections of UV maps and where we also have a sample of this volumetric rendering. So here you get it from the side. And this here might be the most interesting. So here you have some kind of flames that are so some hot air which is injected into this, into this chamber if you want to. And you have these rods which are cooled at the end. And so you see at the end here, um, well, there's still, I guess, this UV bug that we had before when I look at this final chart. But you see actually the, the gradient on the, on the, the temperature gradient on the, on the pipes. Back to the presentation. Okay, how do I get it? It's down here actually. Okay. So okay, so um, this basically was the talk, yeah? But I just want to point out, well, uh, you can do all these things. Yeah? Um, this is completely done in open source software. Yeah? It's not really rocket science either. So if you, if you want to do it, there are manuals for this. And it's not, I guess, it, it should be accessible to most of the people that are here. Um, well, you can get all the glue code in order to render these, uh, these streamlines and in order to export these. Uh, these images from the VTK files that you can UV map onto your bodies and stuff like this uh, on GitHub. Uh, you can get the slides and all this stuff uh, on my Google Drive. And uh, well, this is the open source software that was used for, for this talk. Um, while uh, for what we have presented here, actually, uh, well, Paraview is completely obsolete. Yeah? So Paraview was just used. Uh, as a side visualization tool if it actually works, if you get the real results, if the streamlines are correct and stuff like this. Yeah? Um, then I say thanks to, to Kano Computing because, uh, well, uh, some of the stuff was uh, when I was employed there. The, I, I wrote some of this stuff here. Uh, and to the, to the George Sharpak uh, Institute of Biomechanics where, uh, well, where I made the rendering that you have seen before for the, for the person which was standing there. Okay.